video. Game show, it's a video. Game show, it's not a game show. About videos, it's a video. Game show. Welcome to GamerCast Network, episode 13 for November 24th, 2006. I'm Bob, and joining me today is Chad. Guten Tag. Uh, Ivan. Kenichiwa! And the mighty uh, Keith. Excuse me. I was trying to hold that in, <laughs> but I just couldn't do it. <laughs> Hello! With my grand entrance. Very grand. Indeed. Oh, we have one piece of community news this week. A reminder for our listeners about the Medal of Honor giveaway. There are three World War II themed prize packs this time around. We're asking listeners to make a GamerCast Network propaganda poster styled after those from World War II. You can find all the details at www.gamercastnetwork.com slash MOH. Deadline is Thursday, December 21st for submissions. Uh, I promised my cousin I'd do this, so I'd like to say hi to my cousin Polly. And I promise not to say anything ignorant. Good luck with that, Bob. <laughs> Let me know how that works for you, man. Yeah, she's never listened to the show before, so I don't think she has any idea what she was asking of me. <laughs> I also have one more thing to add. Bob stopped by today. We tried to pop in uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance and play with Chris online. Apparently, you have to have a paying subscription to play online. You can't. No, you can't play online at all. You can't like share an account to play online. Yeah, we Each just person tried that to plays play online has to have themselves. their own account. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, it really... Gears of War is the same way as well. Yeah, we didn't know that. So aren't you glad you have multiple controllers so everybody at your house can play on... Oh, wait, no, they can't. Oh, Oh, I'm sorry. Each person has to have a Xbox Live Gold. You have to have an Xbox Live Gold account, yes. That I did know, actually. Oh, okay. Well, we didn't know because we didn't the game much sooner. Next thing you're going to tell me is, you know, World War II ended. Next topic. Uh, with us tonight, we have <clears throat> Vicious696 from Uncle Gamer Radio. Or Uncle, yeah, I think it's Uncle Gamer Radio is the. That's what your your, your actual <laughs> podcast is called. <laughs> <laughs> no, because they have. When you download it, you listen to the show all the time. It's a wait, radio wait, what's it called link. again? <laughs> it's a radio link where you go to get the shows, which is why I want to say it's Uncle Gamer Radio. Yes, it's it's Uncle Gamer Radio, but I'm. But it's UncleGamer.com. Right. Well, yes, the website is UncleGamer.com. This is one of the podcasts I listen to on a regular basis because you guys pretty much crack me up and I can relate. Hey, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, hey, you know, I mean, to be honest, let, let, let's be real here. I listen to you guys, which is what inspired me to want to go do a podcast. So we inspire so, hey. people. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God! <laughs> Believe it or not, we had no idea. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your the website and the podcast and what you guys are doing there. Okay, well, just to give you background on, on Uncle Gamer Radio. <laughs> uh, basically, I wasn't sure the- to introduce the site for, for, the, for the podcast. <laughs> I got to defend myself here because <laughs> I really do like this podcast and website. All right, UncleGamer.com, Uncle Gamer Radio uh, is a creation of you know myself and uh, Liquid Life, who also created another site called CTag.com. And basically, we got together and des- decided, hey, you know, we want to have a voice within the gaming community. You know, we hear all the other uh, indie podcasts, you know, and we have an opinion too, kind of thing. And really, you're like, oh my god, these guys suck. Like, We've got to be <laughs> able to do better. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you, you know, I don't claim to be, you know, the, the greatest in the world or, or anything. It's just, you know, I'm a gamer at heart, so is Liquid Life. And, you know, we hear you guys, we hear other podcasts, and then we have similar opinions. So we decided, hey, why not start our own thing and get our opinion out there, too? And since then, you know, the website has kind of taken a life of its own. I mean, it's really become a lot more than what we thought it was going to be initially. Uh, as it is right now, we actually are bringing more people, you know, on, onto the site, you know, as part of our staff. And we have people doing editorials. We have people submitting news on a daily basis, as well as we have the Uncle Gamer TV, which is just kind of our little YouTube kind of thing where we can put up various clips, old commercials, you know, gaming reviews, all that kind of stuff. Stuff, uh, you know up on the website and I'd say just within the last couple months uh, it, it's, it's just amazing I mean the support that we've been getting and, and you know I don't, I don't know it's just one of those things where the podcast is just taking a life of its own and I mean we're still trying to refine it but it's basically become kind of a thing where I, <laughs> it's I guess basically I, already, already twice as efficient as our podcast is. <laughs> well, 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 well no the, the big joke is is that I talk a lot 
and, and it's almost become by default. I'm basically like the quote unquote host of the show. And, you know, Liquid Life is obviously going to be a mainstay on there. And then we just have various guests on every now and again. And we just talk about things going on within the gaming industry. And But you, you know, also have like, a lot of movie reviews and such on a lot of, like you said, the old school snippets as well. You have a lot of different. No, but I do. I did. Uh, I do like the uh, little throwbacks you have in your podcast on the commercials and that kind of stuff. Right. That, that is really kind of cool. Right, yeah. I mean, and that's just one thing, you know, we decided, hey, what can we do that we don't typically hear on other podcasts? And, you know, so we'll play old, you know, toy Quality commercials. material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it, it, it's all just for fun, just like you guys. I mean, I can tell when I listen to you guys, you're having fun. And eh, that's just the same thing for us. You know, no, it's right? hell every day. We're yeah. just drunk, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord. But, I mean, basically, I mean, that's us in a nutshell. Um, unless you got any other questions or anything, that's UncleGamer.com. Now, how's your Wii doing? I heard you got a Wii now. I was <laughs> listening to your last show. <laughs> Wii now? No, you just asked how his Wii was doing. <laughs> well, the console formerly known as Revolution is... Oh, thank you. I can thank stop you. As a matter of fact, before I just came on with you guys, I, uh, I was playing Zelda. And, I mean, it's the only game I even planned on getting for it. And, I mean, I really like it. I, believe it or not, I was a real skeptic of the controller, and I really didn't think it was going to work, and I kind of fell into peer pressure and got it anyways. Yeah, but the, control, the controller is pretty solid. I mean, I really like the controller. So you don't have any problems with, like, you know, too much activity? Because I think that was our biggest concern. It's like, yeah, this sounds like a great idea, except I'm really tired when I get home, and I don't think I want to move much. <laughs> well, yeah, and, th and that was my thing, but honestly, I keep... I keep the nunchuck in the remote. I just keep them both in my lap. You know, I keep them. You know, I don't, I'm not moving my hands all around, swinging them like an idiot. You know? <laughs> so, so, well, there's our problem, Keith. We're idiots. <laughs> it always comes back to that. <laughs> you know, we can't get away from it. No, but yeah, yeah. So far, I, I have no complaints about the Wii at all. Now, the PlayStation Three is a completely different thing, but you know, <laughs> but that is uh, fine. That's great. And 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 what how what's your thoughts on the PS3? I got the PS3 and you know I got home I got the whole 1080p set and all that good stuff and you know I set it up I'm thinking all right this is great this is cool well I go to play a game and there's zero sound and I found <laughs> out I found out that there's a glitch that if you play a Blu-ray movie and then you go to play a game right after without restarting the PS3 you have no sound <laughs> which is beyond ridiculous. Oh, God. that's painful. <laughs> And then, you know, then, you know, I have this 1080p set, you know, Sony's been saying for years, 1080p, true HD, blah, blah, blah. Well, their games won't even up res to 1080p. You have to set your everything to 720p just to oh. watch it. So that's another big one, oh. I guess, you know, but as Sony says, they'll be fixing it real soon. So we'll see. I mean, again, it's Sony. I'm sure that, you know. It will be good down the line, just not a very impressive launch, in my humble opinion. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not very impressed with. It. I mean, it's a solid machine, hardware-wise. You can tell it's it's worth the six hundred dollars that you're paying for it, but they're just not utilizing it properly. What, what did they do officially with the their version of Live or whatever it is? To, to be honest, I've yet to even get into an online game of Resistance because that's the only game I bought for it. But uh, I've been on the uh, Sony oh, Sony store, whatever you call it, online, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> I don't have a, 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 a key, a Bluetooth keyboard, so I had to do it with the controller oh. to do, do all the sign up. Took me about a half hour just to sign up to get on the thing, and then you know, once you get on there, I mean, it's like you go from Xbox Live, you go to that. It's it's decent. But Xbox Live is just so so much superior the way everything's set up that you know it's it's still a little let down. But I give them the benefit of the doubt. This is their first first shot at yeah, trying Xbox it. So I'm sure a, it'll get better. Yeah, had a little more practice with that one. But. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about what four years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something like that. You know. Yeah. But all right. So you're so you're a little less than happy with the PlayStation, but the the f console formerly known as Revolution was. Is worth the buck, worth the bang for the buck. Though, so oh, I far. mean, for for the price and the fact that they're giving you Wii Sports in the box, and you know you have a AAA title like Zelda at launch. I mean, it's totally worth picking up. You know, day one, I, I would tell anyone to go get a Wii right away. PlayStation Three, it's so expensive that really, I I would tell people to wait. I mean, I have it, and you know, I use it for the Blu-ray movies and all that stuff. But 
I mean, as far as a gaming machine, the Xbox 360 is going to be fine for a long time. Well, speaking here of movies, you say you watch for Blu-ray movies. Can you tell a difference in the movie quality compared to a normal DVD on your set? Well, now, I, I'm what you would call a video file mm -hmm. type guy. So, you know, I do this whole the home theater thing, mm -hmm. and I can not I can't tell a difference, definitely. I mean, it's... To me, it is worth it because I do see a difference, you know, on my type of television. But I would say for the average person, if if you don't have the the, the high end ten eighty p set that does all you know all the all the magic stuff that it does, yeah. it's not it's <laughs> not worth it. You know, just regular Joe user, it's it's not going to be worth it if you're looking at yeah. it for a movie player. You might as well stick to DVD. I was going to say, uh, since you say you're like a video file, have you compared it with like HD DVD? Have you seen any? comparison stuff or well well yeah I actually i i have the hd dvd add-on for the okay 360, yeah i was gonna so... ask if you have one of those and like when right you, yeah. when you compare them together can you see a difference in those two no they're no. they're exactly the same there's there's no difference i mean both of them give you a really high quality picture uh the only difference i would probably say between the two is it seems like the hd dvd drive loads up quicker than the blu-ray drive but I mean, that's just minor. Well, that goes along with some of the things I've been hearing about the Blu-ray transfer rates and whatnot. So, that, that right, sense. right. And then, and game-wise, I mean, that's another thing. Uh, resistance, the first time I put it in, it tells it basically is installing itself on the hard drive. Does like wow. a one-time install, so it can speed up load times because the Blu-ray drive is so slow compared to the DVD drive, like in the 360, that it can't load as quickly so it, they do that to speed up load mm -hmm. time so mm -hmm. so in that regard that's why they had to have a hard drive built in because yeah. your load times, your, lo your load times would be atrocious if they didn't i mean in all honesty i was hoping sony came out of the box with just like the greatest thing since sliced bread well you know funny thing uh since since keith is talking i was talking to chris online the day that the PlayStation 3 came out and he was having a good chuckle because I was at, I was very frustrated at that point with all the little glitches that were going on. So he's like, oh, yeah, we tested it out. We had a good laugh about that one. So I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> Hopefully they improve. If not, I'm really sorry you spent $600. <laughs> I can see long term, it's going to be a solid. It's going to be a solid gaming machine, you know. Plus, with all the extra little features. But just day one here, you know, 2006. If you had to ask me, which would you rather have, a 360 or a PS3? I'm going to say a 360 because they have more content. Mm -hmm. uh, ha does Resistance at all utilize the six-axis controller thing? Like, no, I've, anyway? I've heard that it has, but maybe I'm just not far enough in the game yet okay. to to do anything. I heard there's some tilt functionality where you can kind of lean around a corner or something yeah. like that but i've yet to do it do you wish you would have sold it now it's that so that's the thing when like when i was talking to chris on that first day i was so upset that <laughs> i mean i mean i literally the, the ebay finger was right there I, I, was, I, was <laughs> no. to do it. I was like i should just sell this thing right now and just just cut my losses and then yeah, i heard. thought about it i thought about it and i was like well i do want it for the blu-ray playback and that's okay so you know at the I, very I, least I, you got to you got a reasonably priced Blu-ray player. It, no, you yeah, and that's all I had on to a look at. Yeah, yeah, that's how you have to look at it because uh, I was actually in a Pioneer store looking at their Blu-ray player. It's fifteen hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. I, I asked the guy straight up, you, "Sit here and explain to me right now why I should spend fifteen hundred dollars versus six hundred dollars for a PS3." And he couldn't answer it. He couldn't say anything other than we're Pioneer and we're good. <laughs> you know, okay, but well, that's not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, yeah, so, I mean, for the Blu-ray, if you are into the high-definition movies, I would say just keep it. But if you're looking at it for a gaming machine, sell it. <laughs> sell it now. <laughs> <laughs> Any other last questions here for about Uncle Gamer Radio? So, I guess your site is becoming more of a portal, if you will, a uh, aggregate for news around the community? Yeah, and that, that's where it seems to be going. Uh, and, yeah, like you say, a portal for news... Oh, <laughs> a oh, yeah. portal for news and uh, you know obviously our opinions with editors right and right like and we're actually going to start up doing some game reviews here pretty soon too yeah because you said you, you mentioned before you had a staff and i was like wow you have a staff and well yeah <laughs> i mean you have a staff you, too his name's chad yeah <laughs> i don't know it's it's funny and, that, and that's why i say just in the last couple just in the last month i mean it's really started to take off to a point where we had we've had people coming to us like hey you know can i be a part of this and you know can i be a part of the staff what do you want me to do and i would say right now we probably about have about eight people actually working on original content for the site so 
Yeah, I, I, was just, I was wondering what your staff is actually generating for your site offhand uh, right now. Well, like I said, on the editorial side, oh, yeah, just yeah, basically, yeah. just basically content like um, what I'm trying to think of something like like I wrote something uh, last week where I was talking about Zelda and its impact, mm -hmm. you know, with you know for Nintendo over like the last ten years, okay. or or things like uh, just you know Xbox the Xbox Live community, you know where it is right now, where it could be in okay. the future, the, you know those type of things. Yeah, I, I was just. And you're going to be targeting here reviews in the short. Is that what you just mentioned? Yes. So how can, uh, for the folks out there, how can we get your, download your podcast? I'm, you're uh, assuming we can get you through iTunes and through your website? That yes. good stuff? Right. Yeah, we're, we're on iTunes. Uh, obviously, you can go to our, our website, download it directly, stream it from there. Uh, we have all the popular feed catchers, you know, available on the mm -hmm. website, which is UncleGamer.com. <laughs> and uh, if you wanted to email us, ask us any questions, uh, we have, an, have a form set up over there. You can you can register, log in there, or you can email us over at uh, feedback at UncleGamer.com. Cool. Yeah, and it's like like I said, I listen to these guys regularly. They're really good, funny, and like I said, the little clip snippets are stare. I bust up at work the one day because I'm just sitting there listening to it, and the crispy critters jingle comes on, oh, and sweet. I just lost it. Well, and I got like four people standing outside my office, like looking in, like, "What are you laughing at?" I'm like, "Crispy critters. They're a good wholesome bunch," <laughs> and they're well, just it, looking at me. <laughs> It's funny you say that because I, I'm not the one that actually edits the podcast. Liquid Life edits the podcast, and I don't always know the commercials and things that are going to be in there when we do a break. So I was listening to our last episode, uh, which is episode eight, and he threw the fr Fraggle Rock. The Fraggle Rock yeah. theme yeah. in there. Yeah. And, and I'm at my desk losing it because I haven't heard that in like 20 years, you know. But but that's the kind of thing we try and do. Just throw like old stuff from from our childhood on there that'll make people go, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I remember that. You know, that's funny kind yeah. of thing. So. Yeah, that's very cool. Very cool. Or the young kids going, man, it must have sucked then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You guys do a great job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I appreciate it. And, and you, like I said, you guys, too. I mean, you, trust me when I say you guys are probably 90% of the reason why we do a podcast right now. Aww. Seriously. I know. I'm, I'm going to cry. Yeah. I'll take all 90%. It's all right, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Thank God. <laughs> say our goodbyes, Vicious. Thank you for stopping by the show. It was great. Oh, yeah. Hey, I appreciate it, man. I'm glad you guys had me on. And I'll, I'll still be a pain in the ass on the forums. Oh, damn right. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Take right, it easy. Cool. All right. Thanks. Hey, thanks a lot, man. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you later, Vicious. Next topic. Okay, so joining us once again to talk about his PlayStation 3 campout experiences and a little review of the system itself is our great forum moderator, Rothbart. Hey, guys. Hey. What's up, greatness? I can't complain with that introduction. <laughs> <laughs> I should preface this with uh, the fact that uh, uh, K7XPS from the forums and I did two... Uh, pre-order camps and they were absolutely nothing but positive i mean the worst thing was uh you know the security guard in the mall saying you can't lay down with the launch camp we had uh armed muggings within a mile of our store oh, sweet we oh, had God. uh people buying spots in line for insane amounts of money and then getting kicked out of line and uh, having to be escorted off the premises by the police it just went on and on and on and we had a lot of really really nervous people with dollar signs in their eyes that were acting not rational it started out really screwy i mean best buy is where we camped and as far as them accommodating campers i can't complain very much other than oh sure you can come on buddy you can try the, the, <laughs> i believe the, in you roth <laughs> you know we'd show up you guys can't line up nobody can line up can't line up till 24 hours within the the launch of the console so basically that meant that we had about 20 25 guys sitting in their cars in the parking lot we've got a list going and as somebody shows up and acts like they're going to stand in line people kind of mosey out of the car and say, <laughs> hey, hey you know we've kind of got an informal line and a list here and go talk to this guy and get on the list it's pouring rain it's windy so we're sitting there just chilling out hanging out and all of a sudden i noticed there's people lining up and i said you know i'm gonna go tell these people that they're not supposed to be lined up so i walk in and i i say are, are you guys waiting for the ps3 and they said yeah and i said well you know you can't be waiting now they told us we have to come back tonight and they said oh no 
They said we could line up right now. And I said, well, who said that? And they pointed at the, the greeter guy by the door. The, and I go in, and this is the same guy that told me no more than an hour ago that we couldn't line up. He, and he goes, oh, yeah, manager changed his mind. And I'm thinking, well, why didn't you come tell the 20 guys you know are outside? <laughs> so by 6 o'clock, all the units were accounted for as far as the people in line. And so the, the line buying started. One guy was there no more than two hours, sold a spot for $100. He's got it. Well, Watch I, I this. Know. I'll make 100 bucks in two hours. <laughs> well, there was another one that, uh, you know, a couple hours later, he made 260 for less than five hours. And a lot of people were just not counting on the rain. It was really nasty that first night. But uh, later on, it, it got a little more interesting. This uh, college-age kid, I guess, comes by and, and his... Uh, little red sports car and, and he's sizing up the line finding out who he thinks is going to sell he's trying to buy two spots the guy settles on buying two spots for him and his buddy for nine hundred dollars cash whoa and uh wow i i got some really i've really dropped the ball on getting this footage posted i, I gotta get it posted i've got the guy counting out the money 100 200 300 400 all the way up to 900 now pack up your and get the f out and he says that right in front of the entire crowd. I couldn't believe it. And I got it on That's footage. That's great. <laughs> and, and the guy was just, I mean, smiles. And the guy receiving the $900 was smiles. And everybody was happy and laughing. What he does is buys the spot for $900, tells the guys to get out of line. Then he leaves to go get his stuff and his friends. Everybody behind him in line thinks, well, that's not cool. The guy just left. An hour passes. Two hours pass. Three hours pass. He comes back. He sets up his tent. Nobody quite sees his buddy yet, and they were very clear that it was one unit per. So he says, well, yeah, I know my buddy, something's happening. i got to go get him. So he goes, gone again for another hour or so, another two, and they come back. So finally, about midday, everything cools down. They bring out, they've got a 360 there. There's two setups of 360s in the line. And one of them is this guy that bought the spot for 900 bucks. And they thought it would be cool to get one of these 15-year-old kids to return a Tiger Woods Xbox 360 case with a blank CD in it. So, the, you know, the kid didn't recognize any risk to, I'll pay you $20 to go do this, and it being like 50 feet away. So the kid goes to return this thing. He comes out laughing. Ha ha, they wouldn't return it. They thought it was funny. Cue two minutes later when there's about five managers coming out following this kid saying, you know what, that's fraud. You could go to jail. Oh, by the way, you're out of the line. So he, this 15-year-old kid was in the line, I guess, to uh, buy a 360 with his buddy, both of them his mom was going to sell them on eBay. So needless to say, mom and dad were pretty ticked off. So about two hours later, dad gets off work, comes down the line. And I mean, you could just, the car pulls up, <clears throat> stops real fast, door slams, and all you hear is, which one is it? Who is he? Where's he at? And of course, everybody knew something was going on. So, you know, we, we grabbed the cameras and everybody stopped <laughs> looking. <laughs> so anyway, he finds out who it is, goes into the manager. The manager comes out. So that guy gets kicked out of line and he just comes unglued because he'd paid $900 for these spots and proceeded to screw himself out of them. The manager handled it extremely well. You're gone. Go. Get out. The cops are coming. Leave before the cops get here. The guy didn't. Of course, the cops had to come and escort him out. Apparently, he had some sort of warrant out for his arrest. So when the cops wanted him to leave, he had to play dumb and say, no, I don't have any ID. Uh, no, my buddy drove my car. So he had to walk when he left. And then, of course, the, <laughs> cops, the cops hung out for a half an hour or so. The beauty of the whole thing, the uh, the managers were so just ticked at, you know, everybody else was great. And this guy was just the sour apple. That uh, when it came time for us to clean up the morning of launch, you know, everybody put their stuff away and this guy's stuff's still there. And I'm sitting there wondering what's going to happen to it. Sure enough, manager comes out, tells one of his employees, go take that stuff, put it in the dumpster. They threw all of his stuff away. <laughs> So after that, every, everything was really cool. We had lots of reporters stop by. Uh, I successfully avoided all of them. We had this guy come out the night before launch. He pulls up in his car and he says, anybody want to sell their, three, uh, their PS3 tomorrow? I'll give you three grand cash. And everybody's like, yeah, right. So he goes, no, really. I will pay you $3,000 tomorrow, 8.30 tomorrow morning for your PS3. So I want 60 gigs only. And so everybody was like, yeah, that doesn't sound right. So the guy leaves. He comes back and shows uh, withdrawal slips from his bank for fifteen grand. He got 17 people to say, I'll sell you my unit. Oh, so, I mean, that was dollars Hell yes. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> he's like, well, I'll show up tomorrow. I've, I'll have an armed guard because I'll have so much cash. And then pretty much all hell break, breaks loose in our line. People are just not thinking rational. They're like, 
well, we got to protect ourselves. Maybe we should we should haul all these PS3s down to a bank and do the transaction in the bank. And I'm thinking, well, the bank's not going to like that. And what's that going to get you? So what, we, why can, would a bank I mean, like, exactly? You just walk into a bank and go, yeah, we're going to make some transactions here. <laughs> uh, don't mind not us. Not regarding you at all. <laughs> don't mind us for a minute. What, what so. I like about this entire story, Rothbart, is how all of this happened to you. And all you had to do was stand really still. That's exactly how <laughs> <Like, hard. laughs> You didn't move for two days and all of this transpires. <laughs> it, it was a that drama was parade. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we, uh, you know, my spidey senses were tingling. It just it <laughs> did not sound right at all. So I said, you know, you guys at least ought to get one of those counterfeit currency pens. They're not 100%, but they're better than, you know, you standing next to a guy with a gun. You know, trying to hand you money for your PS3. So anyway, they uh, they send somebody for one of those, and uh, there seems to be a lot of gophers here, man. Well, yeah, you had to have your support crews, and <laughs> you can get a lot if you think you're getting three thousand dollars. People were working out their hourly wage. I'm making fifty five dollars an hour, sitting on my ass. I was asking this guy a lot of questions, and somebody said, you know. You're going to sell these on eBay, right? And he said, yes. And, and he said, well, I'm kind of curious. Can we follow the, uh, the auctions? What's your eBay ID? And so the guy gives him his eBay ID. And, of course, the first thing I do is go write it down so I remember it. This was the beauty part. Previously had some people under contract for $300 to wait in line for him. He was going to pay them $300. And then when he came through and said, I'll pay anybody else $3,000, well, the $300 contract people got kind of ticked off. So they got a call in the middle of the night after they had called him and said they wanted out of the deal because they wanted part of the $3,000 plan. And wherever this guy's money came from, all of his funds – well, not all of his funds, but the majority of his funds had somehow gotten frozen. And uh, – I found out later that he had somehow gotten some sort of an inheritance check, and it was really close to the launch time, and he had called his bank to see if he could get all his cash out. And they said, yeah, but it turned out there was some sort of you know, week or two, uh, you got to keep the money in the bank type thing until everything settles down. So he did have a big fat stack of money, but not you know the 41000 he'd promised to the Best Buy crew and the crew from Walmart that he'd told to meet him there. So as the course of the night goes, people go from, oh, my God, somebody's going to pay me $3,000 to uh, what am I going to do with all that money? Me and my buddies are all sitting here to, oh, man, I'm going to have to sell it on eBay after all. And they were they, – they were, so the next morning comes around. The guy didn't show up. So uh, everybody was like, you know, that's fine. We'll just do what we were planning to do originally. I had a pre-order also through uh, EB Games, and they opened much later than Best Buy did. So we were going down to pick that one up. Well, he happened to be at EB Games, and he goes, are you still interested in selling your uh, PS3? And he goes, I'll give you $2,500 cash for it. I sat there a long time, and I really kind of got attached to the idea of opening it, and it's at home right now. And the other one I've got is already accounted for, so... I think I'm going to pass right now. You if passed anything. on $2,500? I still was kind of shady about the thing. My buddy was right there, and he did have his in his trunk. And he goes, you got it on you? You got cash on you? And he says, yes. And he goes, I got one outside. And so he went out there, and he sold it for 2500 bucks right there. The beauty of the whole story was, I don't know how many units the guy did get, but we did track his auctions. And uh, he was pretty convinced when I interviewed him. He figured he would at least break even at three grand. And figured they'd probably hit five grand. Well, we all know that never happened. He sold an auction with the PS3, three extra controllers at $150 each, 13 games at $60 each, and it ended for $16.25. So, Ouch. That, yeah, I mean, he, I, I don't think he, he about broke even with the fees for, for posting. If he'd have bought yeah. it retail, it, it would have been about a flush, but he definitely took a hit on that. And he had another auction where he was selling. I don't know if it was a Dutch auction. or what, It's the one where you can specify I have more than one. So I'm watching this thing, and it was like, I don't know, like a five-day auction or so. And people were asking questions, you know, is it really true that I get all of these games? Because, again, that sounds kind of fishy that you're bidding on something and getting every single launch title. So a day or so before it was to finish, I noticed that the questions and answers says, my house was robbed. I have nothing. And so I checked his okay. other auctions, and he says, my house was robbed. I have nothing. They're all gone. You can send me money if you want, but I have no PS3s or games. Is the guy really trying to scam people? Was he really robbed? I mean, his face was yeah, everywhere. He's probably just trying to cut his losses. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, I was trying to think, you know, I've, I've thought that immediately, but... How, how how would he cut his losses? I mean, is, is he eventually going to be able to sell them for more? 
he might have pissed. He might have offered it to the wrong people who showed up at his house and uh, robbed them. All these people uh, that he was, you know, having signed this contract. This all went down at his house, I guess. So they know where he lives. He was running around saying, "I'm going to have forty-one thousand dollars cash," and he's got pictures on eBay. Of, <laughs> he's got pictures of eBay with, you know, a coffee table stacked with games and like a bunch of PS3s on the oh. floor. So. I, I'm leaning more towards he probably did get robbed. I'm just hoping that this inheritance that he got was large enough to where this didn't just wipe him out. Because, uh, you know, I, I don't wish anything bad on the guy. He was just trying to work a deal like people have done before, but that would suck for him. Anyway, lots of stories. That was a lot of stuff that happened. You need yeah, water in a line. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> so, and then we, uh, I accidentally, I missed the Wii launch at Best Buy, but we went to the Wii launch at Toys R Us, and it was. Just a bunch of guys sitting there. I mean, it, there was no drama, no story. Actually, it was raining. Nobody was prepared. That's pretty much what we had going on. Good deal. And uh, what are your impressions of the two? I got to play with the Wii for just a little bit. I, I thought it was really well, that's neat. That's unfortunate. I'm sorry to hear that, buddy. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> got to play with my uh, Nintendo machine just a little bit. <laughs> there you and, go. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, once we got in, we were really impressed. You know, Wii Sports was pretty much, in my opinion, just you know, a glorified tech demo. Uh, a couple of the sports were actually pretty entertaining. A couple of them I could never see myself playing again. But Excite Truck was a blast. You know, they've been talking about it on the, the forums. So, and my kids, the, the real reason we brought it over was to see if this was going to be something good for them for Christmas. And uh, it's going to be a smash hit. So, not too worried about that. And then the, the PS3, um, I, I, I got to say, you know, the, the launch software selection was resistance. I mean, I have not seen anything else that really has impressed me. Ridge Racer is fun to look at. It's not really fun to play that much. I mean, it's like every other Ridge Racer I've ever played, the motion uh, control on that. Uh, some of the guys on the, the forums were saying it really sucked, and I said, well, you know, I, I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. It does really suck. So I was really disappointed to see that. I mean, you, you play the MotorStorm demo, and in my opinion, it's a blast. And I, you know, last time I was on, I called the, the, the most impressive thing I was waiting for was the MotorStorm demo. And, and thankfully, it's different than the kiosk because the kiosk one has some, uh, some issues, as some of the guys on the forum had uh, pointed out. But I've probably played five hours of the MotorStorm demo just doing various crazy stuff. And you know, I've already pre-ordered the game. It, it was a blast. And you know, Resistance, uh, it's by far the the best game. I mean, if you look at the ratings, there's no comparison, but we put about six hours into it last night. I don't know how far we are into the game, because I don't see any way to tell what percentage we're done, but it, it's really, it, it's a top-notch game. So, but uh, and the hardware itself, and the interface, I mean, you kind of already knew what you were getting into with all the, the pre-launch footage from the, the big gaming websites. It's neat. I think it's going to get neater. I just hope that they hurry up with some good games. So definitely, if somebody's on the on the fence whether to get it now or not, there's no need. I mean, there there really isn't. If if you want to play Resistance, fine, you can get it now. It's not going to hurt you. Uh, but wait. I mean, that's what I would tell anybody. I didn't end up paying for mine, so I'm not too upset that I uh, got mine early. But uh, obviously, there's more fun to be had on a 360 right now. Huh. Hmm. I was just going to say, you know, most employers don't like when you bash the... <laughs> <laughs> when you well, bash the parent company there. I don't know. They need to do something, release some stuff on their uh, PlayStation Network or something. Have you huh? used the play PlayStation Network at all? Or have you? Yeah, I mean, it's... you got to realize I don't have a 360, and I never used live on the, the Xbox. So all I can compare it to is what I've seen at Friends House. Live is better at this point, and, you know, it probably will be for quite some time. But what I've seen so far on the PlayStation Network and just their interface, and, and i got to be honest, the terminology of all these different things still confuses me. I, I don't know if the PlayStation Store is part of the PlayStation Network or if the PlayStation Network is the back end that we're all wanting to be, you know, flushed out. But... Uh, it's basically you, you've got a web interface for their store, which is you know what you have for the marketplace on Xbox Live is done just through their web browser with just you know it's hard coded to go to this one one page or whatever. Real slim pickings looks pretty bad on a standard deaf TV. Not because the layouts well it is the layout. It's not because the the, the graphics and everything look bad. It's that you know try 
doing anything on your computer at you know 640 by 480 and you'll find out you got to scroll to do everything you know you get a list and there's like three or four things and then you got to go to the next page on a, a high def tv it, it looks a lot sharper and hopefully i'll be there in the next few months but uh on my standard def tv it, it could look better um pretty seamless as far as getting stuff except for you know they sorely need to do background downloading that's a bit ridiculous no oh, they force you only do one at a time well, there's no queuing, and when you're downloading, you sit there and watch a progress bar. Just all you right, know, like yeah. it was. But it's a high def progress bar. <laughs> not for me. It's not. <laughs> 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 but uh, it, I was I was really impressed with the interactivity with the the USB stuff it, it, and the memory cards. It, it really seems to be friendly to whatever you plug into it. You want to save this here. You want to save that there. You want to copy this here. Copy that there. Um, it, it was really well done. I mean, you can download something directly to a thumb drive if you want. The, the DRM stuff, uh, possibly you could download it to a Memory Stick Pro in the card reader of the 60 gig unit because it's got the DRM ability in it. But uh, I noticed, for example, the game demos, there was no way to copy those off. Have, have you had a chance to look at any of the, uh, can you actually play PlayStation games with this thing yet? Or is that still? Yeah, I've, I, the first thing I did, uh, well, after resistance was uh, test out a PS2 and a PS1 game, and you know I have really mainstream games, but everything worked perfect, so I, I really okay. can't complain. And th the biggest complaint right now, and the only reason my PS2 is still plugged in, is uh, the guitar from Guitar Hero doesn't, doesn't work. Okay. The, there, there's a little mechanism built in to where when you go into the uh, the backwards compatibility mode, you have to push the PS button on the controller mm. to, to jump in and out of analog mode or whatever. And the, the guitar, the whammy bar, uses analog mode, but there's no PS button for you to push. So even though you can play Guitar Hero, it plays fine. You can play it with the 6-axis controller, which sucks just like a regular <laughs> DualShock 2 does. But uh, they need to come out with some kind of dongle or some kind of upgraded controller or something. <laughs> but... <Dongle>. Uh, <laughs> The uh, the backwards compatibility, as far as the games that I saw, they all work perfect. I and haven't checked this recently. Can you actually download uh, games from the store yet for the uh, PlayStation? You know, the uh, the emulation? The Japanese can. They've had it for a few okay. days. And, and the consensus over there is that this has worked out better than people thought it would. So I'm a little uh, excited to play a few of those games. There's there's quite a few of the, the PS1 games that I think I would probably be tempted to purchase at around five ninety nine. Now, if they go to the ten ninety nine, I'd probably just hit the bargain bin at the store and find some beat up, you know, actual well, discs. It, it depends on the title because some of those older ones you can't find anymore. You know. Yeah, exactly. If 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 they offer those rare ones, then yeah, the rare a lot ones. Of people, thinking like Final Fantasy seven and those the ones you can't get for under like fifty sixty dollars off of eBay. Those kind of ones. Right. And I guess eventually, initially this is not going to be the case, but eventually from what I've been able to gather, when you download a PS1 game, which currently requires a PS3, uh, it will be playable on both the PSP and the PS3 for that one price. Here's just a general question. If they're literally going to emulation, why would you pay for an emulator? Just go download one. Oh, wait, we don't support piracy here. That's right. Are, are you, if you're going to have an emulator that's stationary, mm -hmm. i.e. a computer, Right. grab your patch, call up your mates, go find yeah, them. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm more interested <laughs> in the... Strap on your peg leg, yar! Yeah, I'm more interested in the PSP version because, you know, there are homebrew PlayStation emulators if you want to play it 15 frames a second. But uh, apparently Sony's, you know, I've seen a few videos, it looks to be running at 100% speed, so... At one point that I uh, was completely lost on I me, mean, I'd never even thought about it, was, you know, when you're buying these things digitally, they're not all 650 meg. You'll be able to carry around two or three games. So I, that was kind of nice. I would not thought of that. So, Well, well thanks for stopping by, Rothbart. Um, no problem. Think, anytime. I think we're, we're going to cut you off now. Sounds um, good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thanks for being... For being Alrighty. the only one even remotely related to the show who got a PS3, so we can like have a first-person resource for information now, because without you, we wouldn't have one. <laughs> well, it was funny. I, I created a, a thread in the forums of the, the people that had the, and I don't even know the name of it, so I had to call it the Gamertag equivalent, but their, uh, their friends list names. And uh, there, there was a whopping three of us. And, oh, right. And the, the third one wasn't a valid name, so I don't know what that means. 
<laughs> there was a space in the name, and you're not allowed to put spaces, and I tried every variation with underscores and no spaces, and I couldn't figure it out. So maybe that'll sort itself out. But anyway, well, thanks for having me on, guys. And thank you, right, Ralph. Thank you. Always a pleasure. And I will talk to you guys later. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Next topic. And now it's time for this week's mailbag. Mailbag. Bag. I'm very disappointed. That was well, horrible. Missy is right. trying to sleep, so I can't oh. yell. Okay. Let's try it again. <laughs> it is 11-12, uh, me being on the right coast this time. All right. Mailbag! <sighs> okay, this first one is from Profizzle99. At our local Walmart, there was an all-out brawl between PS3 fans. Let me explain. The manager of our Walmart decided to have a race. They had 11 PS3s, and he set 11 chairs behind the entrance. He said, whoever gets to any chairs first gets a PS3. So the race began, and me, being fast, ran to the fourth chair available. Thank God. But the other fellow eh, wasn't too swift. Another person in the race smashed this guy's head into the light post where the cars were parked. And another guy got trampled. Luckily, both of these men were okay, but it was bad nonetheless. But then some of the people got into chairs, and a huge fist fight broke out to get to the chairs. After that, the first people to walk out with PS3s uh, were being robbed, almost, and people were literally raping each other for the council. I very much doubt they were literally raping each other. That would... <laughs> But anyway, thankfully the cops came to break everything up, but it took two injuries before it was settled. If you wanted, I have the video. And actually, I'd love to see video of that because that would be hysterical. That would be awesome. Thank you. I would like to see video of that. Yes, that would be entertaining. (laughs) That would very much entertain me. So we almost had a video game death, so we'll have to try harder next year. You know, with all this that has been going on with these console releases, I'm, I'm curious to see what happens next time a console comes out. You know, if they're just gonna, like... What was that called? When Lollapalooza first came out, like the first year, everybody's talking about, oh, that's all great. There are mudslides and everything else. And then next year, it's like less cool. And you guys understand what I'm talking about at all? Yeah, I just find it funny to sit in silence and let you okay, ramble. Okay, good. On. Cricket. That's cricket. good. Yeah. All right. I'm, no, I'm curious I, I, to see what. I'm curious to see what's going to go on. In like, if this is just going to get ridiculous, and there's going to have to be armed guards at Walmart every time I, a new damn system comes out, because I think you know, if people there can't is control a new themselves. System? I think if there is a new system, they will have some kind of checks in place for the next time around. I mean, because got, of all the almost mishaps this time. Yeah, people getting robbed. We got retards with inheritance checks, busting out three grand a piece. It's just, it's, get a hold of yourself. Anyway. But little Timmy must have a video game for Christmas. Little Timmy can suck my. D- You're the one that robbed post- little Timmy last time. <laughs> <laughs> we have received review of Second Life by someone who wishes to remain unknown. So thank you, Anonymous, for your, your Second Life review. We'll be posting the entire thing in the show notes this week, but uh, I'd like to give you guys a, a, a sneak preview of what he has to talk about. This is, uh, wow, it's great. Uh, so he starts off, I played Second Life for about two years on and off, logged in about once a month to see what had changed. It was an exercise in human observation. <laughs> The initial premise of Second Life is a utopian art community. You're able to build anything your mind can imagine and take on any form you want, living out a fantasy online Second Life right out of a cyberpunk novel. That sounds pretty awesome at first. Wow, I can do whatever I want. Build a giant spaceship and fly around collecting jelly beans. Whatever the hell your (laughs) mind can think of. The service is a massively multiplayer online Burning Man festival full of crazy artists. So basically he goes on to say that he downloaded the game, set up his account, walked in, and was, you know, at the first appeared like just a giant chat room. Typical laugh, ruffle, laugh out loud, smile, haha, giggles. Um, so it appears our friend here w- was managed to get a little deeper into the game. A little more adventurous. A little more adventurous. Uh, found out where the sandbox areas were, started making himself jetpacks and... Um, flying around and whatnot, and, and managed to crash into, literally in this case, uh, what lay under the surface of the game. It's never advertised or talked about in great detail by the creators. My windows of the virtual world was filled with casino after casino, gigantic structures all filled with slot machines, virtual horse racing, variants of bingo, and every other form of gambling known to man. All utilizing in-game Linden dollars that can be converted back into actual U.S. dollars. That's right, you can spread your real cash to buy virtual cash to gamble with the real world, with the virtual world, in hopes of winning more fake cash that you can eventually transfer back into your real wallet. Well, anyway, Second Life is nothing more than a front for a massively online red light district. Now, I, I really don't think I can read the rest of this on the show of some of his adventures into the depths of this red light district, but please go look at our show notes and you'll get a much better idea of what Second Life is uh, all about. He ends his story by saying, It was at that point I felt so filthy, so sullied and corrupted by this game that I've never logged in since. 
Zuckerberg is like <laughs> the uniquely disgusting cesspool of the internet, hidden eloquently behind the facade of a shared online world, and in my eyes, has zero redeeming values. Second Life should be burned to the virtual ground. <laughs> Sincerely yours, Anonymous. Thank you so much for that letter. And, I, you know, I don't know if this makes me want to see it more or less. I, I think less. So, from from what his article is talking about, if you're under the age of about 55, don't log into this game. <laughs> now I really want the government to tax these people. <laughs> <laughs> they deserve to be taxed. So, yeah, please go on, check the show notes, read the you rest. hear about the latex dog the suit. Super- Oh, stop, stop. <laughs> You're going to ruin it. <laughs> Next one comes from Two Flower. Given you posted in screaming 14-point font for everybody to avoid Second Life like the bubonic plague, I figured I should send in a counterpoint. A lot of folks aren't getting the point of Second Life. It's not a game where you grind XP and get fat loot. It's not a replacement for your sad, miserable life. At the core, this is just a combination of IRC and the World Wide Web. And like them, Second Life is neither 100% good nor 100% awful. Depends on the people you meet and the places you go. Like any open content system, the majority of it will be crap. Second Life areas designed by people who are colorblind and have the aesthetics of a rundown off strip Vegas casino. But that doesn't mean it's all bad, as many areas are quite nicely designed with friendly folks that aren't actually <laughs> aren't actually furry diaper wearing sex muppets. In my short time there, I've managed to be plenty of pe- interesting folks and accumulate decent friends with just like I did when I was on Xbox Live. Dude, one furry diaper wearing sex muppet is too many. I just yeah. come out and yeah. say that. Dude, I just ca- like the term sex muppet. <laughs> <laughs> As for the capitalist side of things, while paying $3,000 for a new skin or shirt is silly, there's plenty of freebies and the tools are there to build your own swag if you're creative and technical enough. That's half the appeal right there for me. Trying to find ways to create new and interesting things in world. I've done free object swaps with a number of other builders, and I'm hearing new techniques every day. I've also bought a few items, and since accounts are free, what little I've bought tallies up to less than WoW's monthly fee. Yes, Second Life has a hideous underbelly, but so does every other aspect of online life. If you're willing to accept the good with the bad, you might find something you like in there. It's not for everybody, but it's not an abomination either. Two flower. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, still though, uh, really nothing in there that still is appealing. He, yeah, he it's may like, have, great. Oh, okay. There's right. a part of the game that's like the World Wide Web and IRC. So this is a, a very valid counterpoint to uh, the last things uh, uh, ho- underground horror empire that, that they said Second Life was, but still uh, n- not so much appealing. There's yeah, nothing not really, in here. It's not, yeah. it's not really a game. I'm, yeah. I'm not, there, I'm there's not sure still nothing is. in here that makes me want to run out and start playing Second Life. I mean, it's free, but it's not anything. You know what I'm saying? It's, well, it obviously it isn't geared for us. It's geared for people it's who... It's geared for people who like The Sims. Yes. And, uh, those, and people who just want to have <laughs> IRC and make their little pictures and put them up. Although it, it probably would be nice if Second Life had a nicer way of interfacing with it so people who want to just do the IRC stuff didn't have to go see the gimps and the... Uh, Dude, kennels. who doesn't love the gimp? I love the gimp, but you know, someone might not <laughs> like the gimp. Uh, That's going to be any anti-campaign uh, you know, advertisement I ever have against you is going to include that quote, Chad. I like the gimp. I like I, the gimp. I like the gimp. <laughs> but, but some people don't. The poor gimp. I, I, I just find that funny, and yes, those people should be getting taxed because uh, the whole gambling with the fake money, converting back into real money game yeah. is... It's called money laundering. Exactly. Give people open access to something and they'll somehow pervert it. <laughs> but that happens everywhere. eBay, PS3s. Yeah. Nunneries. Nunneries. Orphanages. As Bob so kindly said, Timmy can suck his dick. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little Timmy. Poor little Timmy's got it hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel dirty. God bless us, everyone. <laughs> You've been listening to the GamerCast Network Video Game Show, episode 13, for November 24th, 2006. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving, and if you're not from this country, hope you had a great Thursday. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for listening, and we'll see you all next week. If you take Sam away from George, all the sheep are dead. Actually, that probably makes no sense. Yeah, I have no I, idea what you're talking yeah. about. Sam and George were the wily coyote and the big sheepdog.
but they're named oh. for the same orange. I'm sorry. So, with I the explanation. As, I view that as my failing, Keith. I'm sorry. Well, there's only like two episodes <laughs> of the cartoon that have yeah, Sam and George. Yeah, but they were funny. I know. That's why I thought of it. 